Whoa, that's bright. Sorry, hold up, hold up, boys. Very bright. Real quick. Oh, that's bright. Dude, knock it out. Slow down there, Trigger. Well, we'll do this. Can you see me? There we go. Out and about again. Um, I'm on a scout camp, actually, so it's late at night. I didn't show what we did earlier, but I got my, my hammock set up, and I just wanted to show you what I did. I'm out in the desert. Like, I mean, sand everywhere. This is, this is, we're out here. I don't know if you can see much out there. Let's get some light going, maybe. There you go, this is, we're out in the desert and there are, well there's some fence posts out there, but there is, I don't even see the fence posts, but there's literally nothing but sand out here. So, sand and all kinds of animal tracks. You can, you can make that out in the sand there. The little crawlings of boot, that looks like a boot print, but no, those are critter tracks all over in here. Or the boot print in them, but you can see that right there. Let's get that. There we go. See the critter tracks out here. We got these are made by a beetle. Somewhere up in here, I got a snake track. So I'm gonna do a little night herping. I think not much, just just enough. But here's what I got going on. Since I only have one tree out here. It's called a Russian olive tree, but I've got my hammock tied up there, and then since I didn't have another tree, I got a 2x4 here. And I dug down into the sand here about 4 feet, just about to my the top of my thigh. And these are 12 feet long 2x4s, I got two of them, and uh, this is as high as I can reach with my hand. So 12 feet long, sunk four feet into the ground, and then I've got cords. See my pair of cord running off, and I've staked them down here, wrapped it around, put it over there. Sorry, I'm going so quick here, but so yeah, that's that. That's hopefully, and I've already laid in there. I've already got in here, and it and it fits. So I mean, it's not moving. So I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, I gotta fix my underquilt a little bit. It's not tight. I never put my underquilt tight. That's rule number one with underquilts. Don't make them tight. If you make it tight, you sit in there, and if you don't have elastic cord up here holding on, it'll break. It'll tear. It'll it'll lose its fluff, and you'll never. It'll just be a mess. So, got my bug shield on because it is. Uh, we are May, middle of May, so. Yeah, anyway, this this is working out great. I'm gonna do some more of this at home and show you and see if we can do it without sinking the two by fours deep in the ground. But stick with me, I'm gonna go do a little walking around and uh, we'll be right back. Good morning. Wanted to do a quick update video. The uh, lines hold. Everything seems to have held very well. At least I didn't get dumped out on the ground. So, yeah. That worked out very well. I'm quite impressed. I am very impressed. So. Here we go. I'll head home and I'll show you how I set this up. Well, I'm gonna go visit some hot springs and then then we'll head home. Ah, oh, can't forget my drill. <laughs>
All right, my friends, welcome back. We are at the house, and uh, what we're gonna do this time is, uh, as you saw, 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 as you saw in the previous clip, uh, we were able to set up the hammock fairly well. Just one tree and the two by four. So what we're doing now is we're gonna set it up here in the yard. Let me show you, boys. Right, just right out here in the open. Uh, I'm gonna attempt to set up the hammock using just the two by fours. So. And the key to making this work is um, proper staking it in. You gotta get those stakes in there good. It actually doesn't even matter if those two by fours are in the ground, they just need to be uh, staked well. So if you got, say this is your two by four and you've got your hammock hooked here, it's gonna swoop, swoop down, I'm trouble talking, headache, swoop down like this. So and if it's hooked on here, you wanna also on the opposite side hook your straps and they're gonna go down at the same angle as the as the as your hammock now if your force from your hammock is pulling it this way it's going to want to pivot down here on the end so it's going to swivel it like that it's going to pivot so that's why you have your straps on this side at the equal height so it holds it in place so let's just do it it'll be easier using my honest outfitters hammock this time We'll get some steaks. All right, I'm not gonna bore you with the details of putting all this up. I'm gonna get a move on it. Blue gloves. I'm gonna get a move on putting this up and we'll see you in a minute. All right, boys and girls, we've been pounding on this for a minute. We got it almost set up. So let's do a little highlight here and show you things to watch out for, things to do. now. First thing you noticed, maybe you didn't, but now you do. This guy right there, having a bad day. Let me come up here and show you why. Now, so, $10 to whoever knows why that did that. I even put screws in it to try to prevent it, but what I failed to do was chamfer it. What that means is you take your knife and you cut the edges off so let me go show you. This is what happens when you don't do that. But, come down here to this one, and uh, you notice it's still trying to bow out. It's still trying to spread out like that. When you, when you hit on that, this the wood's gonna end up mushrooming out. It's gonna try to mushroom out. And chamfering is taking this edge around here and just cutting it off with your knife, giving almost a rounded, rounded, you know, appearance like that. <laughs> focusing on the background how how nice anyway so it's uh that's called chamfering you just grab your knife and you carve this whole edge all the way around so that it has a bit of a, a round to it and that it will still mushroom as you see there's a little crack here it will still try to crack out but it's not going to do what this guy over here did and just split to pieces now there well i can't say that there's still a chance that it will do that but as you can see, even with screws in there, it's still split apart. Now I'm gonna use this piece because that's what I got. I just took a piece of it and pegged it down. This little piece, it's probably in the ground eight or 10 inches, but it's, it's, it's fairly sturdy. It, you know, it, it should hold my weight. And I did as I put a, a slip joint knot down here at the bottom. And uh, you notice another thing? My line is running over the top of my quote tree so and that's for a specific reason now let me show you down at this other end have i got my strap tied onto it and everything so it should be a bit easier to illustrate but anyway so i've got my strap and uh set up the camera here bear with the old man so what as i did is i took my my strap and i laid it across the top of it here and I put a screw in. Now that screw, you're not gonna carry screws or two by fours with you out in the field, but the screw, just here to, to imitate, uh, say a, a branch or a peg or whatnot. So the screw's here. I put my, my line, now this is 550 cord. It's supposed to have a safe 
strength of 110 pounds. So this thing 110 pounds, but it also has a braking strength of 500 pounds, and I don't weigh that, so anyway. Anyway, so then what I did was I took my, my strap, let me pull it out, and I fed it underneath. And on the other side, again, a screw, just like on the, on the front side. So I put it like that, put my strap on there, and I fed my, my strap through just like I would if this was a tree, except for it would be vertical. That way, then I can take it and hang, put my hammock on one of these hoops, grab the other one, pull it straight up, and uh, voila, we got, a, we got a hanging hammock. So the next step here is I gotta tie off the other string over here on this end. Right, so I gotta tie off the string onto that one. And uh, yeah, we should be all right. I brought an extra length of 550 cord out just in case. Uh, might need it, but anyway, so now what we're gonna do is, uh, yeah, even when you chamfer it, like, even when it's chamfered, it still wants to crack a little bit, especially this is just really dry pine, and we got a lot of pine out here, so it's, you, you use what you got, right? I chamfered it, otherwise it would have torn apart like that one over there, but you know, it's just, you just gotta do what you gotta do, so anyway, so, just like the other one, I laid my cord across the top, I tied it on over there. I'm not going to quite, well, I'll tie it on over here, but if it doesn't end up being long enough, I'll add a, use a square knot and add, a, add an extra one, so. We'll go through how you get everything all hooked up in a minute once I get the thing in the sky, and uh, yeah, that's how we're doing it so far. Be right back. So there you go. You first set it up, stick it on an angle so it's pulling on these strings. So let's, uh, how about we put some weight in there? Uh, I'm not gonna stick myself in there. That would be just kind of stupid. So on the first chant try, I'm gonna put something else in there. So let's go grab a sandbag. All right, here we go. Got a 50 pound bag of sand, so let's just set this here and see how it holds, huh? Yeah. Huh? That's sagging. Nylon stretches. All right, let's straighten these out, huh? getting there. I'm gonna have to pull my strap up to here, I think. I didn't put the two by fours far enough apart, but that's all right. We learning, right? Again, let's uh, lift up and slide it in. I don't want, I guess it doesn't matter if it's perfectly straight. Same on this side, sorry you can't see. And now, come here, you guys. Let's have a look down here. We want everything to be relatively straight, and you can see it's not. This side is at a shallower angle than this side, which is gonna do something weird. So this is gonna be tighter than this, I think. Um, the whole thing is gonna wanna list to that direction, which is not what we want, so we're gonna have to compensate by tilting it that way a little bit, I believe. But, that's only 50 pounds on there, but so far so good. The string is tight, but that's not, that's half of its, quote, safe weight. And I'm 165 pounds soaking wet, so we should be all right. Let's, let's see what we got here. I'm gonna go ahead and increase my, uh, or decrease rather the length of my hammock by moving my strap connectors down. See that one's right there? We're gonna move it up to the highest, same on the other side, so we're not drooped down in there like a darn banana. Here we go. This one's already to the top. That could be a problem. This one's three from the top. No problem at all. So, 
because we're stupid, we're going to do this with weight on it. No, we're not. Although if I take the weight off, that one's going to tip over, so maybe we are. Don't laugh now, I'm a beginner. Huh. Well, all right, boys and girls, let's have a look at this. What did we learn? We, we got to test it first. It's like a banana down there. It's, uh, it's going to be interesting. All right, let's not kill ourselves in this mess, but uh, we got to test it out, right? Make sure it works. Let's go see. Alright, well, it's working. Hammock is hanging much, much lower than I'd like. That's easy enough to adjust. You shorten your strings, you move a two by four back a bit. There you go. So it's holding. That is only 50 pounds. Now here's the fun thing. If I get in there and one of these straps break, uh, those two by fours come down on top of my face. Yeesh. Do I do it? They say 550 pounds, so. I guess there's only one way to find out, right? <sighs> yeah. Let's go get in it. We did all this work for nothing if we don't. Putting on a sunglass so I can see when it comes to hit me. Well, well, that's a thing. It's good to make sure everything is lined up before you try to get in there. Everything is gonna tug and pull. So I'll give it a few pushes here. And I know I've put 100 pounds on it just by pulling and pushing. Well, here goes nothing. Well, I got most of my weight on it. But this 50 pound bag is probably all of my weight. So let's move that out. Keeping some tension on there. All right. All right, we're in. Okay. Now I'm breaking so far. Leaning back. We're actually all the way in this now. Problem. How do I get you guys over here? All right, come on guys. Getting in here is a bit of a trick, but slowly creep down, slide the sand out. Sand is easy to clean up out of a hammock, by the way. So, I'm gonna wait until that sun's gone and we'll record the rest of this. Hold on. Let me flip around. Let me flip around. I can't let tension off of this thing because she don't want to uh, stay up. Granted, when you're out in the field, you can do things about that, like prop up sticks against it. And I feel like we're stretching a bit. But we are in it. So 
That, my friends, oh, love hammocks. So that is how you set up a hammock without trees. We have just a simple two by four and two lengths of 550 cord. Now, these things are rated uh, as a safe range of 110 each, so that's 220, um, but a brake strength right now, um, uh, written on the package, a fail strength of 550 pounds per strand. So, theoretically, I should be able to put a thousand pounds in here. I wouldn't trust it at that because with different angles and whatnot, it won't hold that, I don't think. That's probably tied off vertically with weight on it. This is being levered, leveraged, whatever that word is. So, here we go. This is my view. Uh, tie it off, it's not tied off. Now what I would do differently is I would tie it off up here and have one strand there and a second strand there and tie it off up there. That way this thing can't slip and go side to side. You see it's a little little crooked, it's tilted toward the left here. Uh, yeah, that's the left. So it's tilted toward the left and I bet it's the same on this other side. Um, get, can you tell? The sun glare, maybe, I don't know, I can't see what you're seeing. If strength green don't move. Anyway, so that is what I slept in, not last night, uh, Friday to Saturday last week. I was pretty sick over the weekend, so sorry, no video. So there you go. Um, next video is I'm going to head out at night and do a little night herping. I don't like that word. We're going to go out and look for critters at night. Um, Nocturnal critters are a lot of fun to find. Scorpions are easy to find. You throw up a black light and you find them. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that sub button and throw a like down there. And of course, uh, as always, love your faces and we'll see you on the next video. <laughs> but wait, is there things I wanted to explain? I don't remember. Let me think about this for a bit. Hi, let's talk for a minute about how this setup is working. So, since all of the pivot is up here, you've got pole going this direction, and you got pole going that direction. That junction right there is what keeps everything tied together. Now, as you see how this is on an angle like that, that's not exactly good because gravity is trying to pull it straight down and as you can see it's not straight it's kind of tilted like that so that bottom might have the propensity to kick out that direction uh, I don't know if that's gonna happen but that's just my my brain at work so we do a straight shot that's see it's quite quite an angle there so as tension is pulled this direction this nylon cord, while it shouldn't slip, it's going to slip a little bit. Not slip, but stretch. If I can get a focus here. It's made up of a bunch of interwoven strings of nylon. And while the nylon itself does not stretch, the weaving will flex a little bit. Well, not flex, but stretch as it spaces out. So that's going to cause the whole setup to move top of it at this pivot point it's going to move that way well the pivot points down there but at this junction here it's going to go kind of go that way causing it to tilt and if it goes too far that direction this bottom end may kick out that way and you'll end up with a two by four or a branch or a log on your head you don't want that so as well as now the way i've done it i would do it a little differently rather than making these strings bright sun making it one continuous length which is easier to set up but once you get it all said and done that's dark let's go let's highlight this direction once you get it all set up right up here this piece will want to slide back and forth like that and as you can see the whole rig calling it a rig is somewhat twisted so if I hold the camera perfectly level in line with the hammock here, you can see the top of that other board hanging out that direction a little bit. So that end's leaning this way, and this end is almost straight up and down. 
So if that continues down there, that thing could slide that direction and twist the whole thing over. With enough weight on there, I don't think that will happen, but it is a possibility. So what you might want to do is test this out. What you should do, actually, is like I've done here, rather than just go out and use it in the field like I did, is you want to test it out in your yard and cut all of this to exact lengths. So you know that from your base point down here, it's going to be X amount of feet there, and then your length of cord will be X amount of feet to your junction there. That way everything's all square, nice, and this thing, you want it to act as a tripod with equal distance from an imaginary point here, that way and that way, so that when the whole setup is set up, you end up with, you know, a one angle, two angle pull, and then one angle and two angle. And then, of course, gravity being pulling down this way on these, and I don't know if this is making any sense to you or not, but this is me, me thinking out loud. Um, when you first set it up, lay out your tarp along the ground with your gear in it. Like, doesn't need to be a lot, just enough to counterbalance this, these two by fours from wanting to tip or tip that way. So it just, it just makes it a little bit easier to put, put your, like I throw my rucksack in there. That's 25, 50 pounds of weight, I don't know, depending on what I'm doing. And I, I would lay my hammock flat on the ground, put my stuff in it, and then attach everything together. And like I showed you, pull it all together at the end. Uh, make sure everything's all set up before you get in there. And of course, like I showed you, this right here is enough to hold my weight. But once you get your sleeping bag in there, and if you, like me, carry a wool blanket, you get your under quilts on there. And on my size of a person being 160, 170 pounds, depending on how wet I am, it will, uh, I will have 200-ish pounds in there with my under quilt, my sleeping bag, myself, and I usually will throw a jacket and, of course, my wool blanket in there. So just some things to chew on while you, while you do this. And, of course, I, that little pouch there, I put stuff in it. So I'm going to guess I'm going to get that sucker up 30 pounds heavier than when I started. So there you go. Love your faces, and I will see you next time.